fellas. Welcome to Southwest Titans Fantasy Football League Week 7 Recap. This week we've got a new stud of the week. Finally, I was tired of seeing FAFO the last two weeks. It's like, come on, bro. We got a new stud of the week. Hey, fellas. We put up 159 against, at the time, current, the at the time, number two team, IH Braves. You know, it's fun. I called the upset, but it didn't happen the way I thought it would. I thought I.H. Braves was going to have a down week, but it just didn't happen that way. He he had a, a good week. Um, he had, what, seven guys in double figures and another two guys at nine. But the difference for Hayfellas was Patrick Mahomes putting up 47. Um, that was 33 more points than I.H. Braves quarterback Brock Purdy. So that was the main difference. And plus, having having other positions, getting him 15, 16 points. Um, so anyway, hey, fellas, gets the upset and uh, gets his first stud of the week honors. Congratulations. And hey, fellas, improves to four and three. And he moves up from number seven to number five. IH Braves, uh, he slips to uh, five and two. And drops one spot from number two to number three. And that takes us to these nuts versus Marino's Mafia. Uh, these nuts got a got a nice win this week. He put up 158, uh, just like one point behind um, for stud of the week honors. Um, these nuts gets the win 158 to 128 over Marino's Mafia. Um, you know, let me pull it up here and. Sorry. These nuts, Lamar Jackson, he's been, he's just been doing well. You know, he got off to a slow start in the regular, early in the season, but he's been tearing it up. He put up 45 points um, compared to Mafia's Jalen Hurts, who got 30, which 30 is not bad either, um, but just had too many guys in double figures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven players in double figures. Another one at nine points, so. Just too much to overcome for Mafia. Uh, D's nuts. Looking good. Improves to five and two and stays at number four. And Marino's Mafia, he falls to two and five, but stays at number nine. So not a great season for Mafia. Sorry, bud. And the third highest scoring team in the lead rides Rabbids versus Ozark Mountain Daredevils. Also, this was the largest margin of victory for the week at 67 points. Ride gets the win, 156 to 89. Um, not a whole lot to say about that, uh, to be honest. Um, Rides Rabbids is getting, had a good start on Thursday night with four guys, and then it continued, it continued on through the weekend. So, um, and having Alvin Kamara now and Saquon Barkley back and uh, Brees Hall, who's starting to look better and better each week. He was on bye week last week. So I've got, looks like, three pretty solid running backs going forward, so other than bye weeks. But anyway, Rise Rabbits gets the win. I improved to 6-1 and one and move up from number three to number two. And Ozark Mountain Daredevils falls to one and six and slips from number 10 to number 11. And that takes us to joke time. So there's this poor man who's missing an eye. And this guy's so poor, he can't even afford a glass eye. He has to get one made out of wood. And the poor guy, he's very self-conscious about it. He doesn't go out in public much. Just very embarrassed. Self, self-conscious, self just does not like it. But he's got a buddy. He's having a party. He wants him to come over to his house for the party. The poor man reluctantly accepts and agrees to come over. So he's kind of sitting there by himself and just talking to his friend and, and notice a very large woman standing by herself over in the corner. So the poor man's buddy's like, why don't you go ask her to dance? And he's like, no, no, I can't. I can't. I don't want to do that. He's like, oh, come on. We're all friends here. Just go ask her to dance. So he's like, okay. So he goes up to her and says, excuse me, miss, but would you like to dance? She said, would I? Would I? He said, screw you, fat ass, and walked off. 
would I be self-conscious about it? I liked it. And YouTube followers like it too. I got a lot of new subscribers on that one. All right. Mighty Coon Dogs versus the Cowpokes. The Kamish. Mighty Coon Dogs gets the win 127 to 117. I mean, this was I said this was gonna end in a tie. I'm I'm disappointed. It was like a 10-point win, so. Well, technically, it was just under 10 points, but um, Mighty Coon Dogs, basically, the Vikings wide receiver, Addison, got him 27, and that was the huge difference um, for him because all of his other positions had 9, 10, 13 points. Um, and then Cowpokes, again, with Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, Cowboys defense on by. But he, his Cleveland defense got him 19, so that wasn't, you know, horrible there either. But just Gabe Davis had a horrible game, um, only six yards. Um, Atlanta running back. And, David, didn't you say something about maybe that he was injured and, but wasn't on the injury report, so no one had any idea that he wasn't going to play that much? He only got three yards. Um, so that is unfortunate if that's what happened. Um, cause there's, I mean, that just sucks. If you got a guy that says he's healthy and then you find out last minute that, eh, he's really not that, not that healthy. So anyway, mighty coon dogs improves to four and three and jumps from number eight to number six into the top six and cow pokes slips to four and three. And also slips from number five to number seven. So currently out of the top six, but still has a winning record. So, and again, we're um, halfway through the season. So we still have seven games left in the regular season. FAFO versus Tua. Gets the win, 119 to 116. Tua, come on, buddy. I mean, you couldn't just... I thought you liked 140. I mean, I, I know you had guys on bye week, but it's not a great week. I mean, you did start off good with Foreman, the Bears running back, getting 28 points. That was a noon game, I believe, because I was watching that and, and, and saw your points racking up there, but that was pretty much... It to a 12 points, um, just not what he's used to scoring. And FAFO, I was really surprised Kirk Cousins had as good of a game as he did um, against the 49ers D and no Justin Jefferson. I was really surprised by that. But um, Kirk Cousins put up 28. Uh, A.J. Brown from the Eagles put up 22. Um, Tyreek Tari Hill. Not not what he's used to, but still putting up 15 points. But anyway, it was enough to get the three-point win um, over to a... So FAFO remains undefeated, stays number one. Tua drops to three and four and also falls out of the top six from number six to number eight. And finally, I thought for sure Paduke fans was going to get his first win of the season. And it was like his worst week. It may be in the history of this fantasy football league, in all honesty. Um, <laughs> Tebow United scores 100 points, but wins by 34. <laughs> That's how bad it was. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. Uh, I don't mean to laugh. Tebow gets the win 100 to 66. I mean, for Paduke fans, just... Four points, three points, five points, just across the board. His highest score was Matthew Stafford with 16, and that was it. And then he had a linebacker with 10. Those are the only two near double digits. Um, and Tebow United. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tebow United had three stars on bye week. <laughs> he left in his lineup. Three starters on bye week and left him in his lineup and won by 34 points. 
I'm sorry. Poor Mike. I'm sorry, buddy. But Tebow United gets his first win of the season, and he tried real hard, too, by leaving those three three bye week players in his lineup. Um, he gets his first win of the season. He's now 1-6 and six and moves up from number 12 to number 10. And Padute fans remains the only winless team in our league um, at 0-7 and, and drops from number 11 to number 12. So, anyway... Anyway, another fun week. Can't believe we're halfway through the regular season, um, but we gotta be optimists and say, "Hey, we still we still have half the season left." So, in addition to the playoffs, so we're good. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you liked the joke. See ya.